Let's do a quick breakdown of some of the characters we can expect to see in Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Let's jump into it. Hi everyone and welcome to another video from It's Gaming. My name is Hubert A. Shorter. Well, I wanted to spend a few minutes just talking a little bit more about the companions in Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard because they are interesting and each one comes with its own specific set of skills. So, you know, why don't we just take a quick look at that? So I'm going to actually go to the Veil vale Guard website and we can see that we've got a list of all the expected characters that we can expect to see. So, why don't we start with everyone's favourite. I think she's kind of become a favourite, even though no one's got their hands on the game yet. Harding. So, Lace Harding is a Dwarven Scout with a positive outlook and a ready bow, as well as unexpected magical powers. At her core, Harding is still a girl from Ferelden. She loves adventure, animals and nature, and is fiercely protective of her family and friends. One thing I've noticed with Harding is that she is sporting some bruises and I've not seen an image of her I don't think where she's not got these bruises and cuts anyway. What are her abilities? Seismic shot, heavy draw, shred, adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush, soothing potion, um, Harding skills with the bow are unmatched. Her arrows can stagger enemies and shred armor. Now we've not seen any videos, gameplay videos anyway, of Harding. So it's a little hard to kind of figure out how some of these abilities actually work. We'll probably have to wait until the full release of the game or they release more gaming videos. But I know they want to try and avoid spoilers as much as possible. We've got Davrin here. Let's have a look at Davrin. He is a Grey Warden. Bold and charming, this Grey Warden has made a name for himself as a monster hunter. Though he was raised in a Dalish clan, he craved excitement and adventure. He'd rather make history than reflect on it. Now he cares for Asan, a young griffin. Now we definitely saw this in some of the gameplay footage. It was kind of a death from above from the griffin itself it looked pretty awesome so the abilities battle cry death from above as i mentioned heroic strike a sand strike i wonder if those are different things well clearly they are they are else they wouldn't be listed as different things in war victory fiercely loyal davrin brings his enemies down hard with a combination of mighty attacks teaming with a sand to keep their companions out of danger so we've definitely seen what he's capable of in the gameplay videos so we've got a sense of what we can expect from the Davrin character there moving on my favorite or one of my favorites um Balara the veil jumper let's have a look at her Balara Lutare I hope I pronounce that properly anyway Balara is creative romantic and obsessed with uncovering the secrets of ancient Elvenhan. Elvhenan. Yes, I think Elvhenan is a better pronunciation. She has a strong sense of self, a clear idea of who she is and what she wants, and will push herself to her limits to find the answers she seeks. Sounds reasonable enough. Abilities include fade bolts, enfeebling shot, replenish, time slow. I think time slow is going to be very useful, especially if you are in a sticky situation with lots of enemies so i'm looking forward to seeing how that actually works you've also got galvanized tear Valara manipulates the fade and uses electricity and control magic to support her companions and diminish the powers of their foes very interesting indeed let's go on now tash is a little bit of a dragon hunter 
Tash belongs to the Lords of Fortune. Uh, a Kunari dragon hunter allied with the Lords of Fortune. Tash lives for adventure and doesn't mind taking risks. While her interests include sparkling treasures and hitting things with an axe, always good. Tash is also deeply knowledgeable about many topics. Now you can see from her abilities, there's a lot going on in terms of dragon-like skills, fire breath, dragon's roar, dragon fire strike, spitfire and fortune's favor. So that's going to be very interesting. A dragon hunter who uses the very tools um, that seem to come from dragons. Who knows? Who knows what's going on? There? Blunt and straightforward, Tash is a mighty warrior who wields dual axes and breathes out flames, igniting enemies with draconic fury. So I would definitely like to see um, Tash in action. That's going to be pretty awesome, I think. Now, Lucanis, I used to say Lucanis anyway. Lucanis de la Morte of the Antivan Crows, the Antivan Crows is an expert assassin for whom the Antivan Crows are a family business. He's poised and pragmatic, but he'd rather not be the center of attention. His focus is usually on his work. Lucanis specializes in executing powerful mages and has earned himself the title of Demon of Virantium. Looks a little bit like a dishonored character, but we won't dwell on that. Looks quite serious, actually. So abilities include Eviscerate, Abominate, Soothing Potion, Debilitate, and Adrenaline Rush. There's a lot going on with Lucanis. The wings we saw in the video, the wings and everything else, that's that's just something that might be a part of the Antivan Crows. I don't know. If you do know, please put it in the chat. I'd, I'd really love to know. Lucanis stylishly deals necrotic damage in battle with his dual daggers, whilst supporting his companions with potions and buffs. So again, something to look forward to. Now, I have to say, Emric here, this to me is a guy who looks like a Disney villain. Emric Volkarin, I'm assuming that's the correct pronunciation, but anyway. A necromancer of Navarra's Mornwatch, this well-meaning scholar comes complete with a skeletal assistant, Manfred, who looks absolutely hilarious by the way. Emric is as serious about his duty to protect innocence from the occult as he is about his studies and his interest in the mysteries of the Fade. So the abilities, considering he's a necromancer, include final rites, replenish, entangling spirits, the bell tolls, sounds ominous, and again, time slow. Now, that's two characters with time slow, so I'm thinking that's going to be pretty important. Emric summons four spirits of the dead to both entangle and hinder his enemies and heal his companions. So a healer is always very useful. And then finally, we've got Neve. I'm going to call this person Neve. It might be Nev, I don't know. But uh, Neve Gallus of the Shadow Dragons is a cynic fighting for a better future. Neve is both a private detective and a member of the Tavinita's rebellious Shadow Dragons. Born and raised in a working class neighborhood of Minrathus, she does not believe in the superiority of mages. Well, neither do I. Anyway. Abilities include Icebreaker, Blizzard, Glacial Pace, Time Slow yet again, and Replenish. Neve uses her talents as an Ice Mage to freeze and slow enemies. I think that's going to be very, very useful, thus stopping them in their tracks. So that's a bit of an overview of the main characters in this game. And of course, for different missions, you, you're going to be forced to choose certain characters. I've said this many times. It's a la Mass Effect and there's nothing, there's nothing bad about that. I think that's actually quite good. Um, and so, yes, this is something that's going to bring an extra layer of interest, I think, to this game. Hold up, but there's more. Just yesterday, BioWare released some high resolution screenshots of some of the companions, and I thought we'd just take a very quick look at them now. So I'm going to go back over to the part of the screen here where we can see Bellara 
in very high resolution actually so a very interesting looking character you know you've got these wonderful ears you've got the tattoos well rendered i would say um i'm assuming this is the in-game engine and um it really looks good i think this is um an indication of the level of quality that we can expect from the game uh, moving on, we have Lucanis, again looking a lot like a Dishonored character, dual wielder, so there's going to be a lot of, um, um, almost a ballet in terms of how this particular character fights, but again, in-game engine, very high resolution, it really is looking good. We've got Davrin, the Grey Warden, and I think is that... Um, I think that might be the, um, the animal that's his companion as well. I'm not too sure. Um, I really have to say, I don't know which game engine they're using. Maybe they've developed a new one, but it really is looking good. And then finally, we've got everyone's favorite, Lace Harding. Notice again, she's still pretty bruised up and I'm getting more and more worried about this. We don't seem to have any kind of image or video where she isn't maybe the very very first trailer perhaps actually I'll, I'll, i'm thinking about that but yes um very detailed question is who's going to be romancing harding i suspect a lot of people are going to be romancing harding am i going to be romancing harding i don't know at this point wink wink anyway so those are four incredibly high resolution images that were released only yesterday. I thought I'd show you them, share them with you, get your thoughts in terms of what you think about all of that. Anyway, as I said, this is a very short one. I just wanted to talk about the companions for uh, a couple of minutes or so. Now, we're, we're pushing to try and get a thousand subscribers by the end of September. September starts next week. So do make sure if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.